All right, guys, welcome back to part four. And today I'm rocking the Haters Gonna Hate Skunk 2 shirt that Dave sent us over from the States. Uh, thank you, guys. All right, guys, so now we've got the plenum welded on. We're actually going to flip it over and we're going to start welding on the underside. Um, this is a particular weld we need to get right because that's actually the strength weld. This weld inside is nothing but the formation of the radius. Most of this weld will actually disappear when we port it, and I'll show you that later on. Uh, but when we weld underneath, we need to make sure we get enough radius in the underside weld that when we port this radius, we're not thinning out the metal. Because uh, as it is, when you port this, you will see some fine hairlines where the two metals uh, join. Uh, that's because we're taking most of this weld off. But again, remember, it's the outside weld that adds the strength that's holding the manifold together. This is nothing but the formation of the radius. Uh, so we'll go through that. Uh, and in the Einstein fabrication series that we're doing, it's probably going to come out in a couple of months, uh, we actually get into all the weld setups, the gas setups, the tungsten, the cups, all that sort of stuff, your shrinkage rates. Because again, when you build this, you've got to build it bigger than what, what you need because the manifold will get smaller. This is why we've got to shim the heads up past your head gasket thickness, anywhere from 100 to 250 thou on top of where they would be because this manifold is going to get smaller as we make it. Uh, even this top rim has to be bigger than the top carby plate because the top carby plate we don't weld to, but this top rim has to be welded right around. So it's got to shrink to the size of the carby plate. So we actually have to make that bigger. Uh, so we're going to go through this in the uh, CAD series in Einstein Motors when we do the full fabrication side. This side's more about uh, induction science and bits and pieces, but I'm just giving you a rough rundown on uh, what's to come in that as well. So yeah, again, we'll talk about the gases and how to reduce your shrink rate because again, that's something we need to think about. Uh, but like I was saying, uh, this plate will shrink, you know, 40, 60, 80 thousandths. So when we do the CAD, we actually have to make the rim that we weld on longer and wider than the top carby plate. And again, this just comes down to experience. We've been doing this for a, a couple of decades now. So we've got lots of tips and tricks that um, will obviously help you uh, build your own manifold. But uh, yeah, from here, we're going to port. Uh, weld, sorry, and then we're going to actually port and start forming the radius, and then we're going to texture that. Uh, you'll probably see the rest of this on the other forward block, uh, but we'll just go back and forth and show the different techniques so you know what we're doing, uh, how I like to shape the radius. I like a 70-degree radius, not a full radius, so I actually finish with a sharp edge, and we'll talk about air speeds and bits and pieces as well. But, uh, yeah, that's about it. All right, let's do it. And a little trick I do here is obviously weld them in like a um, opposing order. So we usually start here, then we'll come here, then we'll go to this runner, then we'll come back to that. And that spreads the heat more evenly across the motor if we just went boom, 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 boom like that. So uh, we're shifting the heat around and also pausing in between to allow that saturation uh, to dissipate a little bit because we don't want to just uh, ram in, give it as much heat as we can. We want to try and control the heat so we can control the shrinkage. Uh, so we're going to set up now, uh, get this one welded, uh, and then we'll talk about porting and a few other things and the rim and so on. Let's do it.
All right, guys, so we're going to get into the porting and shaping of the Planum now. And I'm using a Killer Carbides um, 3 8 egg, uh, uh, 3 quarter egg. Uh, that's it, they're 5 8. Uh, as big as you can relative to the radius, that'll stop you trenching. Uh, it really makes a difference in your shaping. And I'm using the uh, Sooner cable drive. I've been using these for 25 years. I had a recommendation from a good mate of mine. I was doing die grinders and they were really knocking my hands around with the vibration and just the coldness of the die grinder. I really, really didn't like them and actually hate porting. And when I went to this machine, um, it really was a godsend as far as hands-wise. Like I can do eight hours on this and I don't feel like a cripple anymore. And, you know, in my early 20s, I was porting and it was just knocking my hands around. So uh, that really has been a big help. But what we're going to do is shape the radius and I'm going to hard edge all my radiuses to 70 degrees. Uh, we've seen the trends with this uh, with a lot of the stuff that we don't know because we get so many uh, very, very similar combos and I can see uh, how it's tending to help torque and power and area under the curve because we're harnessing that um, clear break. Well, that's what we want to do. If we do the math and even if we probe it, by the time we get to that 70 degree point, even on a even on a like 5 16th radius, we're, we're under 100 feet per second there. So there's not a lot of, um, well, there, there, there's no separation really at 100 feet, even, even if we're 30 degrees down off the floor angle. But what we're getting is a clean signal, a clean break for that harmonic element. And that's what I want to chase with these. And that's pretty much what we uh, probably the last, four to five years have started chasing that um, rather than have a full radius and just making the engine doughy. Uh, I've got a pro stock here that I might show you, an older one that has really big washed out radiuses. And now uh, what you'll find is, and the, even the uh, the engine builder and customer, is on the shifts, the engine actually leans out because it loses signal. Uh, those radiuses really help uh, the, the carby signal. I've talked about this in episodes before about how important the radius is even to carby size. Like, um, and that comes down to that wave strength. So what I'm trying to do is improve the wave strength, but also get maximum flow into the runner. So this is why I don't use a full radius. I use a 70 degree, finish it at a 70 degree. You'll see this in sprint cars with uh, trumpets. Um, even Formula One will use a dual stage radius. So a little bit different to what I've shown in some of the other videos. I'll come up with a small radius and then do a really, really tight radius into the transition they're trying to uh, harness that wave effect fast actually use a hard edge in in some of their manifolds there's there's quite a few uh, some v8 supercars use uh, hard edge bell mouths so you see some of the older guys would even just do a 30 degree flare at the end of the bell not great but again it gets the point across what we're trying to do is stop that separation stop that vena contractor that we want that waterfall to stay connected but also on that recoil when the shock wave comes back up the runner i want a clear line around the runner to break also with the radiuses you'll find that because a lot of people ask me oh jake why don't you just you know, um, router it or, or put it in the mill and mill the radius right around. I don't do the same radius on all sides. And also with the radius, I can't get the radius shape that I want with a bit in the mill either. But the, the floor radius is nowhere near as important as the roof radius. So my roof radius is generally uh, about uh, two to three mil bigger than the side radiuses and about four mil bigger than the floor radius because there's very little activity along the floor. It's only a transition into the floor. So we only need a very, very small radius on the floor. I don't need to wash that out and, and put area in the runner where I don't need it. Uh, and same with the sides. Uh, and, and even with our shotgun planums, the radius on the throttle body side will be bigger than the radius on the far side because the air is biased in the planum. I don't need to uh, have as much radius from this side because the separation on the runner is always on the front side of the runner. So this is why I tend to uh, asymmetrically shape my runners because heaps of people ask me, why do I continue to hand shape them? 
Uh, that's why I, I want different radiuses in different areas depending on where it's coming from. And with Carby or a tunnel ram or your air's coming from the roof. So I want a slightly longer radius on the top of the runner. The sides can be pretty much the same depending on where they're leaning. I even compensate for that. And the floor doesn't need much at all. You can be down, down near a five mil radius, just roll it into the floor. It doesn't need much at all. So that's why I do it. Um, yeah, all right, let's get into it. Alright, so we've got it to this point where we've done the two different textures. So we've cartridge rolled these with a 40 or 60 grit, depending on what you like, and we've burred the planum. Um, don't get too fussed when you're doing this if you slip. You can see I've got a couple of little marks here and there. We're actually going to go back over with the burr now and just tidy this up, uh, and then we'll actually hit it with a stainless steel brush just to take any highs off and flatten that out a little bit so we're going to hit that now let's do it As the finished product guys we've just gone over the stainless it just dulls those little sharp edges off a bit so we still have that texture that I'm chasing uh, but it just dulls it off a little bit and takes any flakes out and then as you can see we've got this done in the uh, uh, 80 60 80 grit and I finish all mine with a hard edge for that 60 to 70 degree mark uh, and that tends to help the wave function because again once if we do the math on the airspeed out here If we're 180 there, we're not even a hundred here So that's more than slow enough to pull over that and it's going to help that um, 
harmonic element in this manifold again. We need all the help we can get, especially being EFI. So now we're going to notch the rim. Uh, first we're going to straighten it up. Uh, then we're going to notch it and we sit the rim over this planum. So the, the rim is usually about 8 mil. We're going to sink it 4 mil down. Uh, this also helps with any backfiring or tuning issues that customers can have. So I've actually had uh, nitrous engines bend all 8 butterflies and the planum still stays together. So this is why I like to encapsulate the planum not just weld it on top, rather put the rim over it. And we also have a center brace on all our manifolds. So we have a center piece that goes through here. It gives it a bit more rigidity and strength as well. 